What's up guys? Welcome to the Computer Science Education Channel. My name is Sam and today we're going to be doing another leak code problem. And the problem that we're doing today is called min stack. So what the problem is asking is design a stack that supports push, pop, top, and retrieving the minimum element in constant time. So we have the four functions here. Push, which pushes an element onto the stack. We have pop, which removes the element on top of the stack. We have top, which gets the top element, and we have get min, which retrieves the minimum element in the stack. So they give us this example here. So we create the stack, we push negative two, we push zero, we push negative three. Then we get the minimum, which is gonna return negative three. Then we pop, which removes the negative three from the top of the stack. Then when we get top, we're gonna to have zero. And then finally, if we get min, the minimum at this point is going to be negative two. So what they give us here is a class definition, which is called min stack. Uh, it has five functions here. Uh, this one is the constructor, followed by push, pop, top, and get min. So let's go ahead and diagram this problem out now. All right, so the real challenging part of this problem is finding what that minimum element is at any given point in constant time. Um, so let's go ahead and see how we can solve that. So we have our stack here on the left. We have an input of an input array of three, five, and one. So what we can do is, so we go to our three, we go ahead and push that onto our stack. And then we, what we can do is we can have a minimum variable set equal to three. Then we push our five onto the stack. Our minimum will still be three, right? And then we get to our one, we push our one onto the stack, and then we need to update our minimum. So our minimum is now one. So this works for now, but notice what happens if we pop something off of the stack. So we pop the one off. Now it says our minimum is one, which in reality we can see that it's three, but if we look at the top of our stack, which is you know, the only thing we have access to, it's a five. Our minimum is one, which obviously isn't right. Um, so this wouldn't work. We'd have to, you know, iterate through the entire stack to get the three, and that would break our constraint of being uh, constant time. So let's try another approach. What we could do instead is at, when we push a value onto our stack, we can keep track of what the minimum is at that point in time. So for example, say we push our three onto our stack. We have a three. What we can do here is also record what the minimum is. So initially it'll just be three because there's nothing in the stack. Um, and this will be, we can uh, hold this in some kind of object that we can create, like a custom object that we create. So then we get to our five, we push five onto the stack. We see that three is what's the current minimum and it's, smaller than five. So here we put a three. Then we get to our one. We go ahead and push one. We see that one is less than three. So we need to update this to be a one. Right, so now let's see what happens if we pop something off of our stack. So if we get rid of this first element, now we can just go ahead and look at the top of the stack and see what the current minimum is because we already recorded it right here and we don't have to go through the entire stack. So that looks like that approach works. Um, let's go ahead and code that up now. So the first thing we need to do is we need to create an object that we're gonna be pushing onto the stack. Remember, because we're gonna have the value as well as the current minimum. So let's go ahead and do that now. So we'll have a class and we'll call it stack pair and it's gonna have the value as well as the current minimum. Uh, and let's go ahead and give this class a constructor. So we have value and current min, and then we're gonna set them in the body. Equals current min, and then this.val equals val. Okay, so that looks good. And then we need to create an actual stack that we're gonna be pushing and popping from. So we'll do stack and we'll make it of type stack pair. 
And then we'll go ahead and initialize it in our constructor. So stack equals new stack. Okay. So let's go ahead and implement the push function first. So if our stack is empty, then we know that the value that we're passing in is going to be our minimum. So let's go ahead and do that first. So if stack dot is empty, uh, then we're just going to be doing stack dot push. And we're going to do a new stack pair with x and x as our values. Otherwise, we need to check if the value that we're passing in is less than what our current minimum is. So let's just say, let's give that a value first. So we'll say int, um, so stack dot peak, so let's say, let's say uh, current minimum, current min in stack equals stack dot peak dot current min. Okay, so we're going to do stack.push. We're going to do a new stack pair. So, our, so the first value is always going to be x because that's the value that we're actually passing in. Then our second value is going to be the minimum of x and cur min in stack. And that's all we need for that method. Um, so, yeah, so let's see here. So let's go ahead and implement the rest. And the rest are going to be pretty straightforward, right? So for pop, um, we're just going to check that the stack is empty. So if stack, because if the stack is empty, we don't want to pop anything off of it, right? Uh, but if it's not empty, then we just want to go ahead and do a stack.pop. And we're done with that method. Uh, to get the top element, we're just going to do stack. So return stack.peak val and we're done with that one and then get minimum should also be one line so it should be return stack dot peak dot cur min and we're done well let's go ahead and run it and see if we get any errors and we don't so let's go ahead and submit that and success um, so runtime is 64% and the memory usage is 32%. So that's most likely because we had to create an object that we're pushing on. We could have just pushed on like an array with two elements, but I think the way that we did is better practice in case maybe later on we want to get like the current maximum value, then it's a very easy change. Um, so yeah, that's all I have for you guys. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Please like and subscribe and have a good day.